HTC Invitational. My name is Nimsh, and I'm joined here by Monk, my co-host. And we are watching a very nice tournament. I'm expecting Ties of Time versus Zale next. Monk, what do you know about those guys? Yeah, it's a kind of a very similar matchup to Ty to uh, Strifeco versus Dog, where we have again four American players. Uh, of course, Tides of Time and Zale, both from America, and there, it's going to be more of like a battle of the old school versus the battle of like the newcomers. Tides of Time, of course, was one of the best players of 2014, winning the Chinese WEC tournament and winning just a lot of tournaments all over the place. Um, he's just really dominant there, but unfortunately, he's kind of taken a break with Hearthstone in the beginning of this year. But uh, he's come back like fairly strong even by winning the Kingwin Eastern tournament earlier last month, I believe. Meanwhile, oh, yeah. Zalei, he wasn't really around in 2014, but in 2015, he's been pretty hot winning the Amazon BlackRock tournament and just doing well in ESL Legendary Series overall, even getting Archon to pick him up. Oh, yeah, uh, because again, we are going to see Cloud9 versus Ar Team Archon. Um, you know, like Cloud9 won uh, far about uh, loss to Colento, but maybe now Team Archon will be able to take this game versus Tides of Time. But as you said, Tides of, Tides of Time is, is coming strong, and uh, he is one of those players who's bringing those walky decks, kind of. Like, he is a, a great deck builder, and he is bringing, like, he's testing cards that are actually weird to some people. Like, you know, we've seen him uh, playing. Dragon Hunter that I mentioned before. Uh, we've seen him playing uh, Mildred with uh, Poison Seeds, um, like actually winning the tournament with the deck as well. So uh, he was one of the first guys to utilize Maligos back in the day uh, when the card was not used by anyone. He was a designer of Maligos Druid. So I am expecting a lot of good stuff from Tides. Uh, but then what do we know uh, about Zalei and his deck building skills and um, the lineups that he's uh, yeah. bringing? Yeah, both players are actually very well known for the deck building skills. For example, yeah, like you said, like, Ties of Time, he won the Kingwin for Charity Easter Tournament with Volcanic Lumberer Druid, right? Who plays that? Zale at the same time, yeah. he's known for making Frothing Berserker Midrange Warrior that Orange used to win ESL Katowice. He's known for uh, making the kind of the OTK Warlock with Arcane Golem Power Overwhelming that he used to win ESL Legendary Series. And most recently, he's known for actually playing this kind of value grindy mage that has Ysera and Duplicate in it. So definitely like very strong build deck builders from uh, both of these players are. All right, and game no and game number one is ready. Uh, Hunter versus Warrior, Zalei versus Ties of Time, Team Archon versus Cloud9. Same lineup. That's the, the lineup we know and love. Hunter, Warlock, Warrior. Yeah, um, I, you know, we hyped up these players' deck building skills, but uh, it turns out that these two players will be bringing like the most center decks possible right now. The cookie cutters. Uh, the most, uh, like, po yeah, the cookie cutters, essentially. All right, so um, here Zalai playing the Hunter, uh, probably the hybrids we can see for uh, looking at the Leopard Gnome and Freezing Trap. And for, uh, for Tides of Time, we have the Warrior. Um, which is Control Warrior. Uh, looking at Shield Slam, I've seen a lot of Shield Slam in my uh, Shield Slams in my life, and I can tell you this is the Control one. Even though it's it might be similar to, to Green Patron. Yeah, but I don't um, think Green like, Patron is playing that card. The first Grim Patron build, especially from the Chinese server, actually included Shield Slam and uh, Shield Block. But I don't think any modern Green Patron deck uh, runs any of those two cards. So Ties of Time testing for Explosive Trap there, and now I think he kind of knows that, of course he knows it's either Snake Trap or Freezing Trap, and I would probably uh, expect Freezing Trap from Ties of Time. Or, or rather, Ties of Time should expect Freezing Trap, because yeah. it's the most uh, common trap. We do see, indeed, it is Freezing Trap, because the Freezing Trap and Zelay's hand, and Zelay's hand is actually grayed out as well. Um, do you remember because Tides of Time is actually playing this uh, Tides of Time Warrior, and we've seen it a couple of times before, where he is running Dragons and he's running Revenge, I believe. The, the, the uh, Warrior card this, uh, the deal, deals uh, X amount of damage uh, when you are like 15 health or less. Um, or less. Yeah. Well, Tides of Time is kind of known for playing like, like all the different Warrior cards. Like he when. 
uh what's it called when gvg came first out uh first came out he actually used crush in his decks a card that like pretty much no one else has used to date um many people don't know this but back in like the day back in uh very early 2014 everyone was really hyping kit cats as like the warrior god but tides of time was really up there with him like being like the top two warrior players of that era Oh yeah, definitely. He was the one swapping Ragnaros with Leroy and just always uh, in innovating and trying to search for the cards that fit the warrior build. All right, but here, um, just facing those... Uh, so Zale facing the, the weapon. Really tough spot. Like, whatever he plays is going to die. Not really having much pressure, not getting that high main, but it's only turn four. So maybe playing Juggler... To bait out the, the death spite because if he doesn't play anything, Tides of Time doesn't really have to attack. Oh, now he can with the second death spite. They're looking good for Tides. Safe yeah, and secure. With, uh, with a Sludge Belcher into a Shield Maiden follow up and with weapons for days, I think you're going to be pretty happy. Yeah, like Soleil's Sludge... hand is not great. He is basically being stopped. Like Tides basically left his uh, his PC. He knows he's so safe with the Sludge Belcher. Even if he misses a couple of turns, he's still going to be good. <laughs> he's that confident. Yes. But I don't I don't know Tides. You're still playing a hunter, and from what I hear, hunters are uh, pretty good. All right, they there can... is a Blackwing Corruptor, by the way. So this uh, seems like a standard Tides warrior that uh, I believe we've seen at the NVIDIA tournament. And uh, to, to tell you more about this deck, it's, it's running some dragons. I, I believe there is um, there is Nefarian, there is that Revenge. There might be also the dragon that... Uh, how is the dragon called that uh, is cheaper whenever minions die? Uh, Volcanic Drake, I believe. Volcanic Drake, yeah. I think Volcanic Drake is also on this build, but maybe he tweaked it a bit. Yeah, very, very interesting. Like, running Volcanic Drake and Warrior, I can't imagine anyone doing that, to be honest. But I guess it makes sense because you might be running Revenge or Whirlwind. Yeah. But now Coraptor is just a uh, Toll Strider. <laughs> the worst Toll Strider. It's worse because, yeah, it's not a beast. But maybe it's better because it get, doesn't get sniped by uh, Hemet Nissing Way. True. You're, you're not able to kill it with those cards. But then Tides of Times uh, is already at 18, and that Leper Gnome is threatening two points of damage when it explodes and poisons you. But you this... know what? Tide still has a lot of good answers. He has the Shield Maiden, and then he can actually force his Shield Maiden to be bounced back in his hand. So it's a potential of 10 armor to be gained just from that one Shield Maiden alone. Yeah. His situation is so great that even if uh, Zale would have a high main right now, Tides would not be faced by the high main. He would be able to to clear that with a sh simple like shield block uh, after shield maiden attack one of the hyenas. Not attack with the sludge belcher, but sludge belcher just sitting there is uh, saving him so much health. Yeah, Zale. I feel like Zale actually just has to deal with this sludge belcher at this point. Um, how does he do so? With a quick shot, with a bow, or maybe just giving up the Lepernome altogether? It's an interesting line of play. Yeah, he's just hoping to to utilize that freezing trap because he has a second freezing trap in his hand. But the longer the game goes, the more it will favor times of time, especially with shield Ma uh, with shield maiden. Just getting um, shield maiden back and just healing for five with uh, mad scientist kill. Tides knows that there is no explosive trap in the deck, but there's only this one trap that's probably freezing. Did he test versus snake? Like he did attack face, so he knows this is not explosive trap. Yeah, no, not... I don't. He hasn't tested for snake yet. He can, yeah, I it, just because like freezing is so common these days in decks, I think he can kind of assume that it's freezing. Oh, oh my God, man. what is that card? A crow Magnus? Yeah, this is Tides of Time Warrior, and this is actually an, a real deck. He's playing it in tournaments, and uh, that's wonderful. I love it. This is the Warrior, uh, Dragon Dragon Warrior. Yeah, certainly uh, it's a toss-up between Tides of Time's Warrior 
or Firebat's Paladin for like the most creative deck so far in this tournament? I believe he's also running Harrison Jones, and I I've seen him follow up uh, with Harrison Jones after Chromagus to fill the full hand. But yeah, any kind of draw of Chromagus is amazing anyway. So what's the line of play here? You can obviously shield some the high main. You can attack with one of one of the minions, return it to hand. If you want more life, and I believe you do, you will attack with the shield maiden and return it to your hand. Um, and you can just play, yeah, just uh, kill one, uh, one of the one of the minions here. Pretty sick, even, I'd say. You might also pass. Never attack. All right, he's going for the for the secret here. Yep, just securing a nice taunts. Five four. That Chromaga's draw was actually amazing to enable the five four. Exactly. And now, like Zelay is kind of in a very similar position. Like again, this Sludge Belcher is just so annoying. Definitely like the MVP, MVP card of Tides of Time's deck right now. Because it's pretty much been blocking Zalei from going face for the last three or four turns. Also, Zalei got information that there is a dragon in Tides of Time hand. So he might be assuming Alexstrasza. Like most of the dra dragon warriors, they they run Alexstrasza, Isera, and Nefarian. At least the build that's popular. But if Zale may, uh did re research Tides, Tides was playing this exact deck twice, and that was broadcasted twice. So there yeah. was information. Uh, Archon definitely seems to be a team that does a lot of research because, after all, they are living in one house together just to play and practice Hearthstone. So it definitely makes sense that they take this game very seriously. All right. Look at that. Just um, returning that Corruptor to hand is never good. Like, you know it's going to deal three points of damage again. Oh, another one. I can take the hit. <laughs> he can return Shield Maiden again. This is so crazy. Do you kill Command the Shield Maiden here? Oh my god. I mean, it's kind of the equivalent of doing five damage to your opponent, right? Because it's five less armor that your opponent could gain. Yeah. So I guess I wouldn't mind it. Get in there and fight, or you can also go for face with everything. Which is how much damage? Oh, he, all right. He killed Commander she made in, so that was a correct move there. For oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see like a four mana volcanic drake here. I guess that's okay, but I think I'd prefer Chromagnus here to be honest. Yeah, it seems much better. Or just a uh, Coraptor into volcanic drake to bring more power to the board. No, I'm not sure about. Wait, all right. So Hunter is at 17. Can you ensure lethal next turn? This is 14, this is 10, this is, yeah, th this is lethal next turn. So, okay. Zale, instead of going for phase, will have to start trading. This is, uh, well, considering um, Freezing Trap, it's not lethal, but if there's a weapon, no, th with weapon, this is lethal, because this is exactly 14 points of damage with uh, Fireworks and attacking yeah. with uh, one of the five freeze. Yeah, even if he didn't have the Fireworks, he could uh, bounce one of the Drakes back, or one of the uh, Blackwing Corruptors back, yeah, and, and then just deal three damage to the opponent's face. I think we might see a full board, or like, a, an attempt at a full board clear here, with Wolffighter going to the Drake, and then quickshotting the uh, three HP the Black... Yeah, the 5-3, essentially. Oh, All and right. he kind of gets rewarded with a uh, Wolffighter. But maybe you just... Uh, Maybe you just wolf, or maybe you just hero power here. Okay, wow. All right, so he's going for. So is this enough? This is not enough, I believe. Uh, this is twelve points of damage. But he can secure a very good board position. Um, Zale will have eight points of damage. 
So he needs five more. And a five more is a Leroy. That's a quick shot into something. Juggler is not it. Yeah, and unfortunately, Tides will be able to take game one with his uh, pretty awesome Dragon Warrior deck. Oh man, I'm so excited about this Dragon Warrior. He didn't play Chromagus, but still, those Craptors, they did a lot of work. And uh, Volcanic Drake, is it? Yeah, it's called Volcanic it. Drake, right? Like, I, I haven't been casting that Drake that much. Like, people don't play it that often. Yeah, you haven't casted enough Tides Times games, I guess. But yeah, it's called Volcanic Drake, and that's probably, like, the one in, one of the only times we'll see Volcanic Drake being used in a competitive tournament. You are saying that, but I've seen Tides playing it in a Hunter as well, so I hope he's playing Volcanic Drake Hunter as well. All right, Maybe. so that's the time. Taking game number one versus LA with his Dragon Warrior. What do you think, Monk? I think maybe he's just looking at this card. He's like, oh my god, this this card is busted. I should just put it in every deck. And if he wins this tournament with six Volcanic Drakes, we might just be seeing a huge change in the metagame. Well, he won one with Lumberer. So he, if he takes another one with Volcanic Drakes, you know, it's possible. Yeah. Well, All right. With so your we have to remind you guys that, of course, you can win some pretty awesome swag if you just tweet with the hashtag HGC Esports. You can win one of 12 team shirts, one of two tablets, and perhaps even your own HGC phone. Oh my god, look at what! Look at this! I've seen this before. This is the Murloc Warlock. Oh my god, he's playing the exact same lineup as, uh, as before. And this is actually crazy. How do you even play it? So this Warlock Murloc, it's super bursty. It's like, it has so much burst. It's running like, I, I think even Soul Fires, but Dark Bombs, Power of Overwhelming, Soul Fires, Leroy, Monk. There's lots, lots of burst. And Zalai just yeah. picks, picks up the Hunter again. Wow, I'm becoming such a fan of Tides. You're my new favorite player because he brings such interesting deck choices to tournaments and it's just always a pleasure to watch him no matter what he's playing. Yeah, certainly. And um, being an opponent for Tides, it's so difficult because you have to prepare versus the whole tournament. Like you can't bring decks versus Tides of Time only. You have to bring decks versus standard lineup. So you have to expect a lot of Zoo. You have to expect Green Patron. But then round one, you face Tides of Time who's bringing a Dragon Warrior, which is totally different with Revenge, like Chromagus and um, Volcanic Drakes. And then he brings a Murloc Zoo. And the third deck, I, I really hope this is the what? Volcanic Drake Hunter. What is this? Young Priestess. This is a deck from 2013. Yeah, it kind of is. It kind of is the same stuff. Young Priestess is very good. Working for him here. Dark Bomb is only Invader from the future. It's uh, This deck is two years old, Monk. Two years ago, Hearthstone Beta. You were still a toddler, I remember. Okay. We still had milk under our noses. We were playing those decks. OTK, Alexstrasza, <laughs> Murloc, Warlock. You remember being Baby Monk, playing Murlocs? Yeah, I definitely remember those days very fondly as I was a, a wee kid. And unfortunately for ties of time, like this board can get fairly punished with uh, a Knife Juggler into Leopardome. Uh, or an Eagle Horn Bow, just a lot of options for Zillay. Yeah, but it's still like, weird, um, because what do you kill? Like, there are two priority targets. You want to kill the Knife Juggler, you want to kill the the Tight Caller, I believe? No, this is Tight Hunter. Or Tight Caller. The one free Murloc that grows. <laughs> out of anyone, I would expect you to know the Murloc names, because number one, you are the master of, of Warcraft lore. And number two, you really like to play these Murloc decks back in the day, right? Back when the ESGN days. All right. So I believe this is the Tide Hunter because the Tide Caller... Wait, this is the Tide... Okay, I'm confused. I don't know, guys. The chat, chat has to help me. If you guys know how this Murloc is getting is being called, tweet it at HTC Esports and tell us what the Murloc is. Okay. You do buff that. Cold Lights here. Uh, so for Tides, the hand doesn't seem that great, um, but uh, it's a Warlock, so he will be able to draw more cards with Hero Power. 
for Zalei though, he knows that he's facing Murlocs. So he's thinking, is this is this real? Am I really in a tournament with five thousand dollars prize pool against all those top players? Or am I still dreaming? Is it a nightmare and I'm going to wake up and they are going to call me that I'm late to tournament and I need to play versus Tides of Time? And I forgot my pants at home. Yeah. No pants in the team house. So uh, Zele can actually kind of deal with this board fairly well by just attacking the 2-3 and then setting up a freezing trap for, for instance. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's, this is kind of the issue with Murloc decks in that, like, they really tend to snowball a lot. But once you, if you can't get the snowball up, then you're going to be like in a really bad position because you basically need a board with Murlocs in order to buff them very effectively. Uh, but on the other hand, for conquest, you just need to snowball once with the deck, and then when you snowball once, you have a you have a kill, and you're looking good. Is he going to attack? Um, no reason there. There is uh there is two uh I think there are two char charge minions in the deck, a Leroy and Old Murkai. Okay. Not sure if he's running nice. Doomguard. Doomguard, uh in the, the old Murloc deck, Doomguard was a good card to have. But he might have swapped Doomguard for something else. So do you actually kill command this tide caller here? Uh <laughs> I guess you develop your board more. Okay, this is fair. Yeah. Yeah, I think like both targets are good, um, good, good targets. All right, so Tide Hunter is the two one. This will be the Tide Caller, I believe. All right, you can buff your Murloc now, and you can go face, or you can start trading. You can tap first as well. I think tapping is fine here. It's more about board now. Uh, uh, this Flame Imp, I think, is actually never going to get played uh, once again because you probably don't want to deal three damage to yourself against a Hunter player. So we might just uh, see it get used for fodder as a discard for Soulfire. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, there we go. All right, he's going for the Soulfire. Not attacking first. Oh, no. That's oh. such a horrible one. Yeah. As so much attack. Yeah, but on the other hand, uh, if you go for face, your opponent will have to start trading into your stuff. So if there is no unleash the hounds, you're still in a pretty good situation. That's not unleashed, but it can change the board a bit. If there's a Leok. Oh, Leok will just uh, grant a kill on a 4-5. But then again, it's a beast, so... Hmm. Misha would be good as well. The only bad one is Hover, ironically. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Welcome, Hover. The one time you don't want Hover. Yeah. So what do you do now? What's the sequence? Yeah, you want to kill the 4-5 for sure, because it's, it grows, like... And uh, Tides of Time is going to draw two cards. Basically, this situation, whatever happens, is still a situation that's fine for Tides of Time because he has a lot of health, he has minions, and he will be able to tap now. And uh, getting a Doomguard on top is amazing, 5-7. Uh, getting Leroy a bit worse, but basically if he gets into some Murlocs, let's say Hunter into War Leader, that would be great. And uh, he will be looking good. And Hunter I is uh, out of cards, almost. I, I think you might actually attack the Huffer into the 1-2 Murloc just to get more trades in and just to clear uh, Murlocs off fully. Okay, so... Or you might go for face. I mean, that's definitely an option. Going for face is always an option, Dimsh. That's uh, okay. probably Hunter 101. Yeah. Apparently, I missed that class. Okay, there's a Tide Hunter and I believe he has to tap... A chance of getting something great, like a War Leader, or even uh, another Cold Light Seer to, to just to buff your your stuff. How about your clears here? You will want to attack with a two one into the four two. You will want to attack with a four one into the one um, with the one two, and then you might just 
go for face with uh, with your guy. Okay, he decides not to tap and just raise with the big guy. Uh, how much damage? Oh this, is, this is 8, 10 points of damage. 13 points of damage. He's 1 damage off lethal. So he has to draw into a Glaive Zuka, an Abusive Sergeant. Um, abusive Sergeant doesn't cut shot. it. He needs 3 damage for, for 2 mana. That's pretty much Glaive Zuka, right? Yes, Glaive Zuka cuts it. Um, and that's the only card. Uh, I guess okay. you can actually just go for board control here. Yeah, you do still have that quick shot, so... And I think you do have to kill both of the minions. Uh, you are possibly dead to old Merkai and War Leader, right? Because then... Um... Okay, so he's going for the clear. Is he still dead to Merkai War Leader? War Leader will have plus three. This is wow. three plus. Oh, wait. Oh, Leroy? my God. Lear Jenkins. <laughs> but that's so not going to be good at all. That's completely useless. Okay, it's so. It's just going to give your opponent more, uh, more attack. Like, it basically. How much damage does it put on the board? Five, uh, like five damage. It gives your opponent five damage on board plus the hero power. That's exactly seven. So this Leroy okay. is actually unplayable. So if you if you kill the one one, um, leave the Lepernum on board. Then Lepernum is going to, to do four damage plus two. Uh, I think you might go for it. I mean, like you don't play, you don't tap. Okay, Flamen will not do anything. So I was thinking. Because right now it's lethal. All right, it was lethal anyway. But if you want to play Leroy, you can go actually for not tapping, just killing the 1-1, one -one, leaving the Lepernum on board, and hope that your opponent will not have enough damage to kill you. And then you try to get um, a Soul Fire, a Power of Overwhelming, and finish them with Leroy next turn. And you still even can tap because you will have eight points of mana. So you can tap, you'll have six, and you can draw into a Soul Fire or uh, powerful. I mean, he used one so far. He had still um, double power once, one so far. But then again, Tides didn't see um, abuse sergeant. So uh, in his eyes, it was what like five points of damage. So he um, he was killing the one one. There was four uh, points of damage. So yeah, reasonable. E reasonable. Either way, I think Tides had to get pretty lucky there to win a game. But unfortunately, he doesn't win with that Murloc. Uh, Warlock, but we'll probably get to see it again from Tides because I think it's probably certain that he might win a match with this Hunter because, you know, it's a Hunter after all. And oh my god, it's Volcanic Drake Hunter. Yes. <laughs> so Tides brought the Volcanic Drake Warrior, Volcanic Drake Hunter, and the Murloc Warlock to uh, HTC Invitational. Zale running. Well, this is a pretty simple green patron, but he's running the Turboom, which is a card that goes in and out. Like, some people like it, some people don't. I think it's a pretty good card and a uh, green patron warrior. We've seen before uh, green patron just running out of threats. When both patrons are dismantled, when frauding berserkers are out, there are not that many cards that can deal with the situation. And then Dr. Boom is just a great follow-up. Yeah, uh, Dr. Boom and Grom are... Two of the most controversial cards in Grim Patron Warrior. They're less combo-y, but like, sometimes they just feel a little clunky in your hand. Because they kind of don't fit with the theme of the deck and just comboing your opponent out with the Grim Patron. But you know what? It's always nice to just have really nice threats. Alright, so here, um, Animal Companion. Leok or Hathor will be great. That's a Misha uh, and one arm. Oh, actually, you can still deal with that. Pretty sick. So Misha is fine, I guess. He would probably prefer Huffer anyway. So maybe Misha was better than Leog then. Because he hit with the knife. Double dogs. I mean, double dogs is going to be pretty good uh, with the Volcanic Drake. But at the same time, it's not going to be that great against a uh, Grim Patron Warrior. That sometimes if they have armor smiths, they have unstable ghouls. So kind of a double-edged sword in that scenario. 
Yeah, it's kind of like a, a cool tech, having Unleash the Hounds and the Volcanic Drake. But on the other hand, it's not uh, a deck you want to face with that tech. Oh my god, Unleash the Hounds from one to a face. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, but that's... Look at... That's such a weird play when you look from Zalea's perspective, right? It looks like a misplay, because you think, hey, he could just hero power. Why would you unleash for one? Yeah, but we, as we can see from Tides of Time's uh, hand, like, that's probably a good choice. Oh my god, two quick shots in your hand. Definitely not what he needed. Yeah, this is a bit unlucky for Tides. There's, like, actually a lot of anti-synergy in his hand as well, because um, you actually can't get the Volcanic Drake out until very late in the game. Look at that, Alish for one again. Oh, Tides, just not respecting your own dogs. Leperidome doing so much work here. Zalei oh. definitely bring more of like a high curving patron warrior. Because he's bringing Sludge Belchers, he's bringing Grom, and we even saw Dr. Boom in this deck. He also has Thalnos. Thalnos is pretty nice in the deck. You, you run so much like damage there. with uh, m Maybe he's running even Slam. Uh, definitely Whirlwind. Yeah, if you're running Thanos, like you're definitely seeing whirlwinds and rages and possibly slams. <laughs> All right. Tide to time just gives up. <laughs> yeah, that was a tough one. Um, but now Zale has a warlock, and uh, have we seen that warlock already? Uh, yes. Yeah, oh, we no, we haven't seen the warlock, so it could be handlock, it could be zoo, but I'm probably leading towards. I would say Handlock, because Zelay was actually known for playing a lot of Handlock in the ESL Legendary series. So he might just be going back to his roots. And yes indeed, right. it's going to be a Handlock with Acidic Swamp who is teched in. Which is a card that's teched in uh, mainly for Green Patron Warriors. Because it's so good at removing Death Spite. We saw Dog on stream in the past week, he's added Ooze to his uh, Handlock deck. And he's doing fairly well on ladder with it, so... Uh, definitely a great tech choice, I would say, from Zelay. Definitely respect that. Oh yeah, we definitely mentioned that before, uh, that um, Ooze and Harrison Jones are great deck cards to have in your decks. And uh, wow, that Mountain Giant was important. So Zale, uh winning 2-1 to one versus Tides of Time. Can Tides take this game and tie it with his Warlock deck? Who do you think is favorite here? You've mentioned before that um, mid-range hybrid Hunter is favored versus Handlock. Is it still true for the mid-range hybrid with Volcanic Drakes? I mean, all bets are thrown out the window when Volcanic Drakes are involved, a card that we never see in tournaments. But I would have to probably say that Volcanic Drakes probably aren't that great against Handlock, because typically like the game plan of Volcanic Drake is you unleash the Hounds, for instance, you trade a lot of minions into your opponent's minions, and then you play Volcanic Drake. But the problem with that is Handlock probably won't be playing a lot of minions on a single turn, so Volcanic Drake, most often times, it'll just like be played as like a 5-drop or a 4-drop even. Look at that, by the way. This board is unbearable. Double <laughs> Oh my <Misha>. god. <laughs> oh my god, Nimsh. Never change. Oh, oh come on, it's cool. <laughs> I, I liked it, I liked it. I'm one of those people who actually like appreciate those jokes. That was a good one. But um, uh, it is it is good actually. Double four four. Um, there was no hellfire from Zale, but if there was a hellfire, this was uh, more or less hellfire resistant. So uh, pretty good one. If if he wants to trade in an eight eight, he can do it as well. But um, what do you think about that? Like attack the giant twice and then just play volcanic Drake for for four mana, just develop a six four. Uh, it's possible, but. I guess Tides is just really scared of a Shadow Flame if he just goes for perhaps just a standard play of playing the Pilot Shredder. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, I like this. Go oh on. wow, this is this, this is, is bold. Like, this is like well, saying, "Hey, in here. you 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 have it. You either have it or you, or you don't have it." All right, so Zale at six points of health at turn five. No Shadow Flame, no yeah. Hellfire. Hellfire would not be that great anyway. No Molten Giants. If he uses the Hue bot, he's going up to 14, kills one of the bursts, 
and there is 5, 7, 10, 12 points of damage on board visible. Alright, just taunting the giant then. Wait. This will be four here, two here. And oh, kill, kill command. Is, that's it. Wow. Okay. That was pretty sick. So Titus is going to take game number four. Titus series versus LA. On the back of a bold decision to go for face and a kill command top deck. Well, but he's playing double kill command, a quick shot as well. So a pretty good decision uh, that worked for, worked for him here. Uh, Mon, game number five. Game number five. What do you what do you yeah. uh, say about that? Once again, it's going to be game number five, and it's going to be definitely an interesting matchup of the Murloc, uh, Murloc Warlock against the Handlock. It's a matchup that we certainly haven't seen ever since, uh, like the early beta? 2014. Okay, beta maybe. Beta, basically beta. Yeah, yeah so. the the Murlocs definitely add like an interesting perspective to the matchup because if you can buff like a Murloc Tide Caller, for example above three or four health, you can get it out of range of simple Hellfires. Oh man, but there is a Hellfire already for Zalei. Uh, and by the way, Tides of Time taking us, uh, uh, us back in time to, to 2014 is actually amazing. He is Tides of Time. He's bringing, bringing back the past. Uh, I wonder if he is playing Iron Bigal. Have we seen Iron Bigals? Because those are amazing versus Handlock. Yeah, it, they're so amazing that um... I've seen most players, they actually keep it in their opening hand against Handlock. In fact, Iron Beagle is just so good against all types of Warlock, be it Zoo or uh, or Handlock. So no matter what deck you're playing, I can definitely see Merita just throwing that, or like not throwing that back uh, into your deck in the mulligan screen. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, this my is God. actually This is the best possible start because he will be able to, to escape the Hellfire range. And there is sick. no good way to, to deal with them. Like, I think oh. this... Wait, wait a minute. This Ancient Watcher could change everything. If he yeah, plays Ancient it Watcher now, did change everything, actually. And then coins the Shadow Flame. That could be just amazing. This, this is a th tough call. This is actually the turning point of the game. And oh, oh my god. god. He, he didn't do it. Life tap. That just he does might not respect the first. damage. So what do you do now? You can't, you can't play the Belcher. Mortal Coil is suddenly dead. Ancient Watcher is okay, but now it can be dealt with because there's more Mur Murlocs on the board. Silencing one of those Murlocs, it, it's not doing much. It's doing some things, but... All right, so um, you still want to play the Ancient Watcher in Shadow Flame, but that's six points of mana. So you will be able to do it in... Uh, in two turns, and that might be too late. You might be dead. Uh, Hellfire is not doing anything yet. You might want to Hellfire next turn. So what you actually want to do here, you might coil one of the two fours and then maybe silence the other to prepare yourself for a Hellfire coin moral coil next turn. And this is also an obvious play, but... Okay, this will yeah. fail. Yeah, fail pretty horribly. He, I, I, Zalei actually could have considered hell firing on this turn and double mortal coiling, um, but that gets punished by any sort of murloc buffer or even sort of the young priestess. Oh man, this is so much damage here. He is dropping down, and uh, that second power of warming is also very important. Tides of Time will be able to draw two more cards. Even that Mortal Coil is nice. Yeah, so Zelay here, he can Hellfire, coin out a Mortal Coil, possibly be drawn to a Molten Giant. And he would be in an okay position. But ties of time, he has a power overwhelming in his hand, and we know he r probably runs a second power. He runs a lot of Shadow Flames, or rather, sh um, Soul Fires. Soul Fires, Dark Bombs, Leroy. Exactly. Um, even with Old Murkai. So basically, he will have seven points of damage next turn if there is a Hellfire. Okay, Sludge Belcher. Juggler is not cutting it. Um, 
if he taps into a dark bomb, is it enough to win here? Not really. Uh, if he taps into a tight hunter. Okay, Morocco is not doing much, but it's okay because he will be able to uh, cycle one of the coils at least. So power, a priestess, kill Belcher, double coil the, the one, two, and go four face with seven points of damage. So many possibilities. Unfortunately, these mortal coils are kind of the worst card in your deck in this matchup. You just have very few opportunities to deal one damage to your opponent's minions. Yeah. Uh, unlucky for Tides that he didn't get a Murloc. Because with those two Murlocs growing, with every Murloc being played. Defender of Argus is not really exciting here. But then it still looks good for Tides with, um, with the amount of burst. Is he thinking about playing around Molten Giants now? Uh, I guess not. That's the wrong Mountain giant. Gi Yep, that's a blank. So, if you use Hellfire here... You're dead. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, you silence one of the Murlocs, you coil the other, you coil the other first. Then you silence um, the second one, and there will be six points of damage incoming. You will have two points of mana, so you can, uh, you can taunt up the Owl. Yeah, taunting up the Owl. It's probably not going to do you any good against the second Mortal Coil in Tide's hand. Plus, he has like so many extra sources of damage with the power of overwhelming and the defender of Argus. Imagine so, if Zalei had a coin and then just could uh, Iron Beak coin Shadow Flame. <laughs> I think he needs. I think Zalei needs to coil into a Molten Giant. He, he needs definitely a Molten Giant in order to get back to this game. I feel like Zalei didn't practice this matchup enough. That's true. I guess the Archon team has like they need to do more Murloc Warlock training. Oh yeah, certainly. Like, you know, because not playing the Ancient Watcher on 2 is kind of costing him this game, right? Like, this is the turn 1 and turn 2 Murloc. And we are at turn 5 and they are still alive. Oh, okay, one of them died. Oh, he topped like Molten Giants. Yeah, as expected, of course. And now, I guess, Zelay is kind of back in this game. Oh my well, god, he that's was. a good one. Yeah, he is kind of staying alive, I believe. A Puddle Stomper, even. That's actually the first time I've ever seen Puddle Stomper being used in a competitive deck outside of <laughs> Neptilon. Yeah, I can see that. Alright, so dealing with the Giant, dealing with the Owl, dealing six points of damage to the face. Murlocs are still there. Hellfire is online, but is it a good card? So close, he just needs a... Um... Wait, did the Murloc attack? Not yet, okay. Oh, he's, he was thinking to clear. There isn't a second Iron Beak. Um, there, is a, the, there is that Belcher. Do you Hellfire? Like, are you forced to Hellfire? This is so dangerous, right? I don't think you're forced to Hellfire. There's definitely the possibility of just Mortal Coiling and Sludge Belching here, which does seem a little safer. So many possibilities. But if there is an Iron Beak, you're dead. Not necessarily. With the Hellfire play, though, it feels like you're not developing anything on this turn. Or on that turn, rather. So you can you develop opponent... Iron Beak. Come on. Okay. That's. I guess that's fair. Developing a huge 2-1 beast is going to be so threatening to a Warlock at 26 HP. No, we, we jest. But <sighs> kind of. this seems like the play. Yeah, Sludge Vulture is the play, and you you cross your fingers and hope there is no war leader. War leader? Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is uh, this is not over yet, but uh... wait, if the knife if the uh, if the knife hits, mm, okay, it doesn't matter. I think I'll tap here actually. Uh, being tides of time, you can still tap. Uh, no, uh, with a war leader, you can easily deal with the Sludge Vulture. But on the other hand, you don't want to lose your War Leader. And definitely, you don't want to use double War Leader. Now, if you Defender of Argus, Bell, um, if you turn up the 3-2, make it a 4-3. Uh, 
kill the token. You've seen one Molten Giant, so we are less afraid of um, of Shadow Flame Molten. Double Hellfire. I think that's well, you silence one of the... You can still clear with the Iron Beak. So you silence the 6-4, you do Hellfire, and then you hope that the one and only card in Warlock's hand is Puddle Stomper. Yeah. And you hope that he's going to top deck another Puddle Stomper. And tap into the Young Priestess. Yeah, but the problem there is there's just so many top decks the Warlock could get. You've already seen like Dark Bomb, Soul Fires, Power Overwhelmings. Um, and you don't even know that he has Leroy in his deck, which he does. Yeah, Monk, but you have to play Hellfire. Look at this. Like on Hellfire's art, there are Murlocs burning. This card was designed to burn Murlocs, to, to like bathe them in the Hellfire. So even if you're going to lose here, you will be the winner in our hearts because you burned the fish. I, right? I think Tiddler Celestial would definitely be very sad that you're making this speech. Okay, he's because a, he has a he, fish. A, huh? Yeah, he's a cute Murloc after all. Well. All right, so Zalei tried to tap into a Molten Giant, I believe. Um, for a better Shadow Flame, possibly. And uh, Tides of Time is going to take game number five and take this match with his Murloc Warlock. I said it, Monk. I, I don't believe. I... If you tell me yesterday that I'm going to say that, hey, the Murloc War Warlock is going to take the series, yo, I would not believe you. I mean, when Tides of Time is playing, like anything is possible. He's definitely like, he out of every single competitive player, I think he brings like the most outlandish decks. He, of course, innovated Leroy Jenkins in Warrior. He innovated, uh, he was like the first competitive player ever to use my control tech in a competitive format. Yeah. So definitely like, Paladin, I believe. Way out there in terms of deck choices, deck building. And like, kudos for him because he can win with such creative decks uh, in like such high stake tournaments. It's definitely oh, yeah. very entertaining for all the viewers and even the casters. Tides boys, but then again, Zale putting up a great fight and uh, keeping a straight face there, uh, playing versus uh, those decks, making good decisions, and uh, you know bringing solid decks as well. Like Handlock is not easy to play, and uh, he he loves the deck. Then um, he's Hunter, and uh, I believe Warrior, uh, interesting green patron um, build as well. And it was really close. Like um, at game five, it could have um, gone either way. So uh, props to Zale, but Tides of Time is going to advance to uh, tomorrow. And uh, his opponent will be either Show or RDU. And uh, Show or RDU is our next match. So, guys, um, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Up next, Show versus RDU. Be right back.